Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is another problem for my probability class, Levy and the arc sine law. First, I'm gonna give you a little bit information about this mathematician. Paul Pierre Levy uh, was a French mathematician who was active especially in probability theory and introducing fundamental concepts such as local time, stable distributions and the characteristic functions. Um, during World War I, Levy conducted a mathematical analysis work for the French artillery. In 1920, he was appointed professor of analysis at the École Polytechnique, where his students included Benoit van der Bord, Brod and uh, Georges Matheron. His 1948 monograph on Brownian motion, Processus Stochasticus at Movement Brownian, contains a wealth of new concepts and results, including the Levy area and the Levy arc sign law, the local time of a Brownian pass, and many other results. Levy received a number of honors, including membership at the French Academy of Sciences and honorary membership at the London Mathematical Society. So let's look at the problem. Then we'll look at the solution of this problem and discussion part of this problem. Problem states that a fair coin is tossed successively, like a x j equals plus 1 if the j's toss is a head, and xj equals minus 1 if the j's toss is a tail. Define the differences between the number of heads and tails after j tosses by sj equals x plus 1, x plus 2, up to xj. Show that the probability that the last time there was an equal number of heads and tails within the two end tosses occurred at the 2k's toss is s2k equals 0 and s2n minus 2k equals 0. Let's look at the solution of this problem. Here we can see that here n2j over 2 to the power 2j is a number of ways the event is to j equals k, k can be realized. And we first establish an important result here. And using the law of total probability, we get this. And then applying the Balotelli theorem, we'll get this the result, which is 1 over 2, P2J. And it can be the equation 29.2 can be rewritten. And we'll prove this theorem. Let's look at the discussion part of this problem. The result we get from the above can be explored to obtain some truly intriguing and fascinating results. And uh, here, let t be the number of toes, where there was a last and equal number of heads and tails, and let x be the fraction of the total number of toes, where this last equality occurs. Then x equals t over 2n, and the distribution fun function of x is, you can see this, 2 over pi arc sine over x, arc sine square root of x, sorry. And the probability density of this uh, equation is 1 over p square root x multiplied by 1 over x. Here, when the number of tosses 2n is large. And let us continue. Uh, here, uh, in this equation, this is beta distribution, which is symmetric about x equals 1 over 2. And the result, this result, which we shall call the second arc sine law, was the first presented by the illustrations of uh, French mathematician Paul Levy. And for the case of Brownian motion, analog of a symmetric random walk. An example of latter is a coin tossing experiment we have considered here where the differences between the uh, number of heads and tails is the position of the random walk and the number of tosses is time. Roughly speaking, in the limiting case, as the fluctuations of a symmetric random walk become quite smaller, and we obtain a Brownian motion. Although it might may not appear at first, the implication of the graph in the previous uh, equation here, sorry, here, uh, uh, 
are quite disconcerting. We see that the densities are highest near x equals 0 and x equals 1. While it's not surprising that the less equality in the number of heads and tails is really likely toward the end of the tosses. So thus, if you were to toss a fair coin thousand times, the probability that the last time there was an equal number of heads and tails happened before hundreds toss has a probability as high uh, has a high uh, as high as approximately uh, here to a pi arc sine 0 0.1 which gives 0 0.20 and happened before the 500 toss has a probability of approximately 0 0.5 thus there is an about equal chance that in the last 500 tosses there will be no instance where the accumulated number of heads and tails would be equal the time at which there uh, is an equal number of uh, heads and tails are rare. Uh, these uh, conclusions are no doubt quite unexpected. Feller also writes that suppose that uh, uh, in a learning experiment lasting one year a child was consistently, consistently lagging except perhaps during the initial week. Another child was consistently ahead except perhaps during the last week. Would the two children be judged equal, yet let a group of 11 children be exposed to a similar learning experiment involving no intelligence but only a chance? One among the 11 would, be, uh, would appear as a leader for all but one week, another as laggard for all one but one week. Feather's point is that common opinion would most probably judge the second student as a better than first However, by the very nature of chance, even if the two children were equally good, um, one would be ahead of the other for 51 weeks with probability approximately equal to, as you can see here, 2 over pi arc sine square root, uh, square root of uh, 51 over 52, which gives 0 0.9. Thus, out of 11 equally good students, we would accept approximately one to be ahead for all, but the last week, as we uh, would accept, expect approximately one to be lagging uh, for all but uh, the last week. Here you can see the density, uh, the fraction of the total time when there was a less and equal number of heads and tails. And uh, Arcsine law was actually given by Levy in a uh, seminal paper almost 20 years uh, prior to the second law. In it, Levy Prove the result essentially implies that if y is the fraction of time the random walk is positive, there is an excess of uh, heads over tails, then the distribution function of y is, as you can see here, 2 over pi arc sine square root of y, where the total number of steps made by a random walk is large. The first arc sine law is a counterintuitive as a second law for uh, we might expect uh, that approximately half of the time the random walk will be positive and there will be more heads than tails and for the other half it will be negative that's we would expect values of y near half to be most likely how uh, most likely however uh, if we go back to our first equation here um, uh, that reveals the contrary to be case. It's actually values of y close to 0 and 1 that are most likely. What this implies is intriguing but uh, true. With high probability, the proportion of time uh, and uh, the random walk will be positive. Is either way very low or very high. Thus, if a fair coin is tossed thousand times, the probability that there will be an excess of heads over tails for less than 10% of the time or more than 90% of the time is uh, high as approximately 2 over pi arc sine square root of 0 0.1 which gives 0 0.20 on the other hand the probability that there will be an uh, excess of heads over tails between 45 and 55% of, uh, of the time is only about um, 2 over pi arc sine square root of 0 0.55 minus arc sine 0 point square root of uh, 45 which gives 0 0.06 there is at least uh, one other arc sine law again due to levy if uh, z is uh, 
is between 0 and 1 uh, is the time of the first occurrences of the maximum of the random wall, then z has an arcsine distribution function too. That's all guys. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Thank you.